Hello world, welcome to the Fonz's office. Today, I'm going back to the original format of doing this interview today via audio only podcast. I have a very, very special guest today. In fact, he is the most super special guest I've had yet. And that's because this man gave me my start as the super fan. He is the Battlefield Fight League president, Mr. Jay Galshani. Jay, how are you doing today, sir? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing super. Thank you for asking. You've got an amazing event coming up on October 12th. It's Battlefield Fight League's BFL 74. It's going to be coming live from the Harbor Events and Convention Center in Vancouver, British Columbia. And for those folks who can't make it live, it is also available on UFC Fight Pass. We've got a formidable fight card here, Jay. You've got 14 fights on the card. You've got seven amateur, seven pro. You've got four titles on the line, one amateur title, three professional titles, and you've literally got four fights on the top of the card that could headline any card across Canada. How in the heck did you do it, sir? How did you put this card together? Well, when we did BFL 72, that event um, with uh, Dian and Said as the main event, that was a very, very deep and stock card also. Yes, it was. We had a fight, so we have to kind of top that. So yeah. This, um, this is this is the deepest card in Canadian MMA history outside the UFC. So we booked um, three title fights that we added Tristan, who's fresh out of the UFC, yeah. to the card. And then the, the other three main card fights are also big, big fights. Adam and Gag and Gil, uh, Mitch and uh, Ojan, uh, we just added that recently to the card. Yes. And Brandon and McKenzie. So we booked, we booked all the top uh, top 10 ranked fighters that were, that were available for this thing. We got them on the card. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. And and you had uh, uh, 15 fights. You had over 15 fights at one time. You've had a couple that have dropped off, but you still got 14 fights on the card. Um, do you, when you go about matching cards, do you intentionally make a couple extra fights? We usually see uh, fight cards around the 10 to 12 fights. Uh, Mark, your fight cards are always a little bit larger. And I appreciate that because I'm a fan who likes to attend in person. So I like to get as much fights in as possible. Is there a strategy around uh, extra fights being on the card? Yeah, the perfect number of fights uh, you want as like, a promoter is probably 12 to 13. Okay. But um, sometimes you book, like I think it was DFL 60, Seven, we booked 13 pro fights. We didn't lose a single fight. We had all 13 all pro 13. fights. Yeah. Sometimes, usually, you, you do lose a lot of fights because of injuries and stuff. So if you want to be safe, you book a little bit more. Sometimes you don't lose them and you end up with 19 fights in the car like we did in the at BFL 7. It's always a learning experience. But 12 to 13 is what we always aim for. Nice, nice. Yeah, so it, it is a perfect amount. Uh, when you're there at the venue live, uh, you're there for an, an experience and you get to have a few hours in the venue being in that the crowd i got to talk about the crowd because the crowds inside that convention center the harbor events and convention center i've been to the last two events live and those events are electric it crowd is so loud in there and it just you feel it you're vibing uh, you can't go to an, a battlefield fight league event and not leave that event feeling just amped up and excited yeah, for sure. I mean, even when we are at the casino, at any venue we do the events, it's always the loudest fans in Canada. And it's a fast-paced show. You don't have too much breaks. It's go, go, go. Yeah. So it's one fight after another, so you don't have to wait um, too long between the fights. And just because of the athletes we have and the storylines, so when people come to watch, they know something about every fight, and they're emotionally invested in every fight. So right. that's why the fans are so into it. Excellent, excellent. Well, I, I know I'm into it, and I know that the fans around me are into it. Um, even the people that are serving the drinks uh, at the at the uh, uh, little bartender area there, the, they're standing up on their toes when they see the, the crowd get wild, and they're trying to watch the fights too. So even the people that may not be uh, combat sports affiliated, they're there, and they're excited as well. So the Battlefield Fight League events, they uh, appeal to absolutely everybody. Um, 
Like I mentioned, you're in that beautiful venue at the Harbor Events and Convention Center. But now there's another big step that you guys have taken. You've got the pay-per-views available on UFC Fight Pass, and they're live. How did that deal come about? Yeah, so we we talked to them earlier through a third party back in 2019, I think. Uh, um, and then COVID happened, and then we, we talked again directly with them, and um, it seemed like the, the right time and the right deal for the both of us at, at that time to because they are the biggest, obviously, platform for combat sports. Yeah. And obviously, 99% 99, 99 of the fighters' goal is to get into the UFC when they start the sport. So this is the best platform for them to kind of graduate into UFC if they have the talent. Sure, yeah. And in terms of, like, the experience and um, the guidance they give us on UFC Fight Pass to kind of better our production, better our ratings. Absolutely. Better everything. It's just the perfect uh, fit for us at this point. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. The, the uh, uh, production value uh, now on the uh, UFC Fight Pass is phenomenal. Um, the events, I, I, I prefer watching uh, in person, live, uh, but I always come home and I watch the events again uh, on the screen to see uh, the little moves and whatnot that I may have missed watching live. And uh, having that backup option uh, to be able to watch that event at any time I could wake up at three in the morning and I can't get back to sleep. Well, you know what? I'm going to throw on a BFL event on fight on uh, uh, UFC Fight Pass, and and it's right there. It's at the touch of a button, and it's and it's so convenient. Um, so I'm 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 thankful as a fan that I now have both options. Uh, I'm hearing it from a lot of my my friends that are down in the states. Uh, even some of my friends over in the UK. Are, are thankful that they can watch uh, some of these regional events because they have aspirations to come over here to Canada to come fight on your platform. Um, we've now seen October 1st, uh, Canada is going to be opening up a little bit and more people are going to be coming into Canada. You already have, uh, there's no shortage of talent on the BFL roster, but now the world is opening up. What in the heck are you going to do with all of these phone calls from around the world calling Jay Galshani wanting to come and fight on your combat surface? Well, that's just going to make the cards deeper, right? Before before COVID, uh, yes. I think 25% of our roster was from the U.S. And that's going to be, we're going to go back to that. So you're going to see um, more matchups that you want to see that we were kind of limited on going by Canada versus Canada in the past two years. Although we did have, we've had four, American fighters on our card yes. during COVID, but that's going to obviously increase exponentially and you're going to see higher quality fights because of that. Absolutely. Absolutely we will. We'll be able to get back to uh, having people from around the, the uh, around the whole world coming back to your combat surface at Battlefield Fight League. And those world titles will truly be world titles. Not that they're not currently, but I mean, there, there will be talent from anywhere, the four corners of the, of the world coming into your combat surface to challenge your champions. And you've got a very, very good set of champions on your roster right now. It's, it's absolutely super to be quite frank about it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the, the champions are all at that level that are ready to take the next step. Yes. I think, uh, Jamie, who's the LFA champion and our champion, and she was just injured. That's why she's not in the UFC. Right. Uh, Caillou was supposed to be on the contender series. Yes. Yeah. Visa issues. You're going to have some big news on him soon. And then on, uh, I mean, the other champion, Diane, he's a six-time champion. Jared is fighting in LFA again yeah. in two weeks of the 14th. And then we got, uh, like, Mateo and Suri. Um, Suri is coming back. He's got an injury. Mateo is competing on this card. Mm -hmm. He's at that, like, top level. That is the kind of guy that nobody wants to fight with him on on the regional scene, and uh, basically at the 55s, we got Nevis who's competing on this card, there's the QOE, and there's all those hungry lions right behind right. them waiting to take the title from them, right? <laughs> so it's such a deep roster that i am actually got chills and my hair is standing up on end when I talk about it. A lot of these fighters that are on your cards, I've developed relationships with them. Um, you essentially gave me my start as a super fan. I was a super fan, but you kind of gave me that title 
when uh, I put a little uh, uh, comment out on your social media a couple years ago for the uh, book Wasp versus uh, Matt Dwyer fight. Uh, I said I would get a tattoo of your logo if you'd allow me to come in. And you took me up on that. And you allowed me to get a tattoo. You even paid for the tattoo. You got the, the tattoo work done for me. And that was my first tattoo ever. You, you essentially unleashed the super beast within. Um, and a majority of my time spent from that moment forward has been developed uh, to improving myself 1% better each day. It's, it's something that I got from the fighters uh, on the Battlefield Fight League combat surface uh, with the development of the relationships that I have. And I owe that to you, sir, a thank you, because you essentially gave me my start. And here I am three years later, having my first interview with you and able to tell you thank you right to yourself. So thank you, Mr. Jay Balshani. I appreciate you so much. And I love how my life is transforming. And I love where I am in my life. I'm right where I'm supposed to be at this exact moment. And that a lot is to do with you. And I thank you for that, sir. Yeah, it's great that you're um, you're doing well, and that one percent a day movement. Uh, that's always a very important thing, right? Absolutely. So you're following that step, and it's it's going well for you. And yeah, that was crazy how you got your first ever tattoo with the DSL tattoo on your arm. Yeah, you know, and it it holds a very special place. Um, it's not my only tattoo that I've got for the Battlefield Fight League organization. You put an offer out there. You put an offer out to the whole world that if somebody was willing to get the UFC Fight Pass tattoo, that you'd consider bringing them in for with a, as a VIP. Uh, I wasn't on social media much that during those days when that post came up. And I happened to log in to go write my mom a message. And uh, I saw that post and I was like, oh, I got to do something right away. And I contacted you. I let you know, hey, you know what? I've got a special place in my heart for Battlefield Fight League. I would absolutely get a UFC Fight Pass tattoo on my skin to come see another event. Not only did you allow me in as a VIP, you allowed me to bring in a guest. So I got to bring in my uh, tattoo artist, Chris Pacor, out at Dead Man Works Tattoos and Body Piercing in Chilliwack, BC. He tattooed the UFC Fight Pass on my skin. He turned it into a, so it looks like a ticket that you would hand into somebody. He did a phenomenal job. It looks absolutely super. And you allowed us to come in to watch the event. And what an event that was. That was Battlefield Fight League 72. And boy, what a card. He, he told me that the, uh, like I had mentioned, the level of excitement and the energy in the air was something that he hasn't experienced in a long time and he loved it. And uh, on behalf of my tattoo artist, thank you, Jay, for allowing us both in that night because as you mentioned, up until this card right now, that was the deepest card in Canadian history outside of the UFC, in my opinion, as well. So Yeah, for sure. And, and this card is kind of stacked. So was there like any particular matchups you wanted to go over? I sure do. I sure do. There's two, there's two fighters that are uh, going to be making their mixed martial arts debut in the amateur division. There's Harrison Woods versus Connor Sutton. Two gentlemen that are going to be uh, throwing down for the first time officially as amateurs. How did this come about? How, did you, how do you find fighters uh, that don't have fights yet that want to fight on your card? How do you determine which fighters are going to be actual fighters and they're not just going to pull out? Um, well, that's a different kind of question, but this specific fight you, you touched on, yes. it's not a normal uh, two zero and zero guys facing each other because Harrison Woods, he's like a 19 year old shit to be on for that age. He's very, very advanced, has competed at the world level. Yes. He was in the trials. I think he, he actually went to the semis and he had to fight um, the other local guy from here, Mike Chris. Yep. The, yep. And that's. Um, so he, when we match up a guy like that, we don't look like we look for somebody else who's also um, has the tools to give him trouble. So right. um, um, Connor Sutton has been training for a long time. He hasn't fought, but he's been training. He's got he's got decent wrestling, decent stand up, decent jiu jitsu. So this should be a good test for Harrison for his first fight. Nice. We'll see if he can kind of um, transition from a high level submission. 
uh, grappling guy into MMA, and this is this is the storyline of that fight. Is he going to be able to, uh, you know, if he can't take the fight to the ground right away, is he going to be able to survive on the feet? And is he good in all positions? So this is uh, when we were looking for an opponent for him. Connor seemed to be a, the perfect fit for for that matchup. Yeah, and and this is why I wanted to mention that fight as well because for two uh, gentlemen that are going to be competing in their officially their first amateur fight in mixed martial arts. Uh, these are two gentlemen that do have a history behind them and they're coming in uh, with some experience. So this is not going to be a sloppy uh, first timers fight. This is an actual uh, fight card that could be even higher up on the, uh, on the list if it weren't for such a deep fight card. Yeah, 100% I agree. Now you've got the interim pro title on the line again. You've got Naveed versus uh, Dario. That's uh, that's an incredible matchup right there. I know Dario feels like he's the uncrowned champion. We saw Naveed uh, against uh, Austin Batra in the main event, and uh, he handled Austin uh, pretty pretty handedly there. And he took the victory. He took the interim title. Now Dario is challenging him for the title. Um, this this fight, Dar Dario is. Uh, uh, is a gentleman who I've spoken to a couple times previously. I haven't talked. I haven't talked to him lately, but I've been watching his social media, and he looks very, very hungry. And he looks like he's got something to prove coming into this fight. What do you make of this this matchup? Well, the storyline behind this one is we all know Dario did fight for the title. He won the fight, but he didn't get the belt because he missed the weight by point he was six versus Kyron. Correct. But um, if you look at this is a very intriguing fight because if you look at the last um, four guys that Dario beat, they have a combined record of like like 35 and 4. He's yes. beating killers, uh, like basically all all top fights, his last three, four fights have been like top tier guys. And then Nabi is a world class uh, wrestler, um, Asian Games wrestling champion, Iranian wrestling champion, coming from that explosive freestyle wrestling background. Correct. So, um, when it, when you have a guy like that, nobody wants to fight him. So he's got to take these huge steps up. Like so, he's taking a huge step up in competition, but he does have that wrestling, and he's becoming more well-rounded. But that one aspect of the game that he has, his wrestling, is so good that that alone might carry him. To the win, but now he's facing a guy in Dario that's very well rounded, Correct. That has faced wrestlers, strikers, jiu jitsu guys, and he's basically been able to break all of them yeah. and come up with a W. So, this is a crazy fight, it and is. It, it's insane. So, we're gonna have to see what happens. Yeah, it's uh, this one is uh, too hard to call with, uh, with how both of their styles match up against each other. It really, really, really could go either way. Uh, but I do believe that this is going to be Naveed's toughest test to date, and uh, what a fight it's going to be. People are not going to want to miss this. They're, they're definitely going to want to make sure they got their tickets. There's not many tickets left either, is there? Can we, can we talk about that for a second? Yeah, it's pretty much, I mean, every time we go to a venue, we, we keep it uh, between, like, uh, no more than, like, 1,200 seats. Right. That's why it's always so loud in there. The worst seat in the house is still a great seat. Yeah. So... This, this venue, I think we only got like 25 tickets left. It'll be sold out in the next couple of days, so you could watch them at UFC Fight Pass. Well, hopefully this interview today will help to get those tickets sold out this afternoon. That's my goal on this. You you, you have one another title fight on the on the line here. Uh, Matt, Matteo Vogel and Taylor Christopher. Yeah, so... Pro featherweight. Matteo, yeah, that's, Matteo is our featherweight champion. He's coming up in his... Uh, DFL debut. He was supposed to fight Radley in a non-title fight, yep. and um, Radley couldn't make the rescheduling of the fight, so he fought Nicolette in that five-round war, which has been the fight of the year in Canada. And what a um, battle! That was, what a battle! Good. Yeah, exactly. And Mateo showed that he has been balanced up. That he's a legit Brazilian shooter, black belt, well-rounded. Yes. And now he's coming off against Taylor Christopher, who hasn't lost in nine years. Right. Who's also well-rounded. It's just, um, it's that ground 
came up Mateo, it depends if you can implement this game and get it done. And uh, Taylor's got all the tools to beat him, and Mateo is a tough guy to beat, so that's a tough one to call too. Exactly, and again, another fight that could be headlining any card across Canada. It's a it's a phenomenal matchup that you made there as well. We 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 move into the main event of the evening. Dean Kajic versus JC Yamas. How in the heck did you find JC Yamas to come up to challenge Dean Kajic? This is this is going to be JC's first fight up here in Canada. Yeah, so with that fight, when a guy becomes so advanced on the regional scene, like Dean has, I think six consecutive wins, five first round finishes Correct. against top tier competition. When he went into that fight with Saeed, because Saeed has looked so dominant also, that, that was the first time there was doubt in people's minds could Dian actually lose. Yep. And he finished that fight in the first round too. Then with with uh, Liamis, the, the, the matchup here, is, here's a guy who's far, top flight competition in the world. Absolutely. He's never been finished against no, he, he's faced legit black belt, yep. bare knuckle belt, or never been finished. And Dian is a guy who finishes everyone, yeah. right? So this is a fight. Um, he has all the tools to make it a very difficult, wherever Dian's game is not the best at, Leonis has those tools. He's a legit Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He is. He likes to attack the leg. He's got a good chin, so he can be knocked out right away. He's a decent boxer. Yeah. And Dian is Dian. He's, got, he's well-rounded. He's, uh, uh, wrestling is very underrated. His jiu-jitsu is very uh, underrated, and this is the fight that he's probably going to have to show his wrestling and jiu-jitsu. So that's this is this is a huge fight. It, this, this, this fight could be in the UFC on the main card easily. Easily, easily. I I agree with you as well there, with uh, with Yamas uh, having the extensive background that he does. Uh, his uh, mixed martial arts experience isn't as deep as Dian's yet. He has more experience when you go looking into uh, his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and his Jiu-Jitsu practicing. Um, being a multi, uh, uh, multi-champion multi black belt, he's uh, formidable on the ground. As you mentioned, he's got a chin. He can take a shot. This fight is going to be action-packed. They both have, I believe, a 50% plus uh, rating in uh, uh, fights going the distance. So while both of these gentlemen have the ability to finish this fight at any moment, they also have the ability to step back and have patience and know uh, when to use their tools at those appropriate times against their opponent. So this fight may be a battle that lasts the distance. And I'm telling you, either one of these guys walking out with that belt at the end of the night, the fans are going to be happy. Some fans are going to be heartbroken that their fighter lost. JC is bringing up a bunch of people. Um, this this crowd is going to be phenomenal. I'm telling you, Dian's fight, the crowd is monstrous. Bringing in the leg lock monster from the States for his first fight in Canada against Dian for a championship title and him bringing fans up with him, this is going to be one of the most loudest events that you will hear, let alone MMA. I'm talking about events in uh, the Vancouver and greater Vancouver area, and fans are not going to want to miss this event. One more time, tickets are available. They're for the Harbor Events and Convention Center in downtown Vancouver. The event date is October 12th. It's a Wednesday night event, and it is also available on USC Fight Pass. Were you going to uh, say something? On, uh... Um, Tristan Connolly, um, who, who's got a win over a, a top five ranked a UFC, top ten ranked UFC Walter Ray in the UFC, yes. he's, he's making his comeback to a promotion, and um, he's facing facing Xavier Nash, who's well, like his record is only six and five, but he's lost three fights um, against top five competition by split decision. So this is a tough, tough fight for both guys. It is it's a high level. This, this could be another 165-pound uh, um, lightweight title fight if Dario and Navid were fighting. So yeah. These guys are both very well-rounded. This is a huge fight. And obviously, Adam and Gag and Gil, those guys are both two killers. They've got a 
combined 25 pro fights between them. Neither guy's ever been finished in a fight, and they're both finishers. Yeah. So th- that's that's a crazy fight. Oh, also. And obviously, Mitch uh, um, is fighting uh, Yeltsin, the Turkish national wrestling oh, champion. The Turkish delight. And uh, McKenzie starting off the card, with two good strikers. Yeah. So there is every single fight is a huge fight on the main card in the start. Yeah, absolutely. Even even the amateur fights are going to be entertaining. Uh, like we mentioned, we're going to be seeing a couple people making their uh, amateur debut. We've got uh, Rizwan Qureshi, who is, I believe, dropping from heavyweight or light heavyweight down to middleweight to take on Marcus Coward. Uh, top to bottom, there's 14 fights. Every single one of these fights is an incredible matchup. They, ha- they are challenging, good matchups. And I am so looking forward to this event, Jay. Yeah, Rizwan, Rizwan had to withdraw a couple of days ago because he's got an injury. But the headliner of that uh, undercard, uh, Jamil and Ethan, yeah. two uh, very good kickboxers going at it. Um, that, that should be a great fight to headline the undercard. Okay, okay. Well, Rizwan, uh, I hope you heal quickly and thoroughly, sir. Uh, if you're listening to this, um, yeah, that's uh, that's too bad. I was looking forward to seeing your fight, but I'll look forward to seeing it next time instead. Cool. Now, now, Jay, you've uh, uh, we'll we'll kind of get wrapping up here. Um, are there any other uh, matchups on this card that you would like to touch on? You, we pretty much mentioned it. You mentioned Tristan coming back from the UFC. Uh, is this uh, is Tristan's fight potentially a number one contender fight, or is this kind of a fight to see if he? Uh, puts on a performance that's UFC worthy again, perhaps it's a fight he can take the tape back to them and try to get back in. Yeah, so in Tristan's situation, is kind of, he's kind of in between 45 and the 55. And yes. I think he is, he still has a good relationship with the UFC. If he does well here or if he gets one or two wins, he's back. Yeah. He's got a lot of options, so good. I don't think this for Xavier, if he wins, this could be a title contention fight for for Tristan. Um, I think he's on the short call for UFC, sure. so he's doing a couple of fights. And then the other fight, um, Adam and Yag and Gil, those guys are ranked number four and number five yeah. at 55. So those guys could leap up to title contention too, because there, there is uh, three high-level lightweight fights. On this card, all right. guys are in the top five, right? That's correct. So everything has title implications. And Mitch and Yashin at the 35, I mean, if one of them absolutely dominates the other guy, they could jump into title contention. But maybe Mitch and Ali fight. Um, yeah. Mitch, they fight. They still fight in December. Yashin, um, he might be fighting Austin Russell. So this, that's a huge fight based on who wins uh, for the next matchup. Beautiful. And uh, Brandon to start off the main card versus McKenzie. Both those guys are coming off huge wins. Yes. And they're basically in a collision path to move into the top five. So that's a massive fight also. Nice, nice. That's that's wonderful. Um, with, with the fight cards as of recent and uh, since becoming uh, a part of the UFC Fight Pass family, uh, we're noticing that the cards are uh, mostly... MMA, the, the kickboxing boats that you used to put on, uh, don't seem to be on the cards as much anymore. Is there, is that because of the UFC contract, or is it just because the focus is more so on MMA now? Well, um, it's more because when we do something, we want to do it high level, like yes. a very high level MMA fight. And because of the restrictions in DC with pro kickboxing, um, the pool is not high enough to have competitive divisions. Okay. And we don't like do, doing too many one-offs. Yeah, yeah, understandably. Yeah, so we don't have enough to, like, build divisions. And uh, I think, honestly, Alberta is a little bit ahead, a lot ahead in kickboxing because they've always been able to do it there. So sure. most of the high-level kickboxing fights in Canada do take place in Alberta just because they've been doing it for 15, 20 years. Correct. Right? Over there. Yeah, yeah, true. Fair enough. I just want to touch on that because I had a couple of the fans asking if we'd be seeing any more kickboxing uh, coming to BFL, and I didn't have an answer for them. So yeah, now, we do. We have we have a uh, uh, Jamil uh, who is four and zero coming back after four years against Ethan, who is five and one. Okay. the undercard, and that, that's a big kickboxing fight. But 
Um, that's for the amateur. I think that's an amateur non-title fight. Um, that, that, that's a good kickboxing fight to have mind on the card. Excellent. Excellent. The uh, Battlefield Fight League's uh, BFL 53, the event that I got the tattoo for, uh, you invited my wife and myself out. You treated us like VIPs. We were cage side. Um, during that night, you came up and you super surprised me. You offered me an opportunity to come walk into the ring and put the uh, Muay Thai Championship uh, belt on the winner of the fight that night, who happened to be Ryan Peterson or Ryan Peterson. Uh, Ryan, if you're if you're out there listening, man, I uh, I never got to talk to you afterwards. That was an absolute honor that Jay uh, bestowed upon me, and uh, uh, I've always been meaning to reach out to you, sir, and and to just just to say hello and uh, uh, try to connect. Um, but Jay, that was a that was a phenomenal feeling that I had that night. Uh, I was able to do something that I never thought that I would, and that would be to go uh, pay respect to Cam. His name was up on the uh, uh, Cage at that point. Uh, Stu is a friend of mine and of my nephews, and the DeLorme family was uh, is a family that uh, my family was close to and was close to. Uh, so that just how everything kind of came about that night, and now here we are, three and a bit years later, uh, coming full circle and having a discussion and being able to talk about these things with you. Um, it's it's remarkable. I, I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you've done, the support that you've shown me. Uh, you literally took the shirt off your rack. I would say off your back, but you took the shirt off your rack. You gave me a bag of shirts that I could wear on camera for doing promos. You're, you're an incredible human being. You've got a magnificent heart, and you truly care for the fighters that are on your fight card. So it, it's, it's an honor that I've been able to attach the BFL name uh, to my own name when I got my start, and it's an honor now that I'm able to pay back the respect to you. And, and sir, I have deep respect for you, and I appreciate you so much. Yeah, and thanks for what you're doing with your paying for you for the fighters. You never mentioned that in your interview. Well, I'm I'm not about plugging my own things, but thank you for mentioning it. Um, I do indeed uh, make some pain cream for the fighters. What I do is uh, I've got a THC CBD base. Uh, that I infuse into uh, a moisturizing hand lotion. So the pain cream itself is multifaceted. It's multi-purpose. It's a moisturizing pain cream. It is good for absolutely anything. The uh, it helps with with uh, I've got people that are elderly that uh, I give the bottles to. They are uh, with arthritis, um, bad knees, bad backs, migraine headaches. Uh, Absolute, that's how I got the start with it, was making it for myself and for my friends around me. Um, and then uh, some fighters were inquiring about it, so I gave them a couple bottles. Try it out after your, after your uh, fights or after a hard workout. Tell me what you think. And uh, I've advanced it to a point now where I'm making personalized labels for the fighters. I uh, make up a batch of 20 bottles. And I sponsor the fighter with that 20 batch of bottles. They get 20 bottles. They can hand them out to their friends. They can keep them for themselves. Um, and then I have some bottles at the home. And if people want to make a donation to the super sponsorship program, they can donate to the super sponsorship program. If they reach a plateau level, I will give them a bottle of super pain cream with their favorite fighter's logo on it. And that's the thank you gift to them for their donation. The donations go 100% to the fighters. I don't collect a single penny myself. The only cost that I take out of that is the cost of the material, and then 100% of the profit goes right to the fighters. So, Jay, thank you for allowing me to mention that um, and for bringing it up. Uh, I've given you uh, bottles. I've, I've brought them to the Battlefield Fight League events. I've handed them out to people in the crowd, so I get positive remarks from it, and I, I thank you again for allowing me to do that because it's a way for me to be able to give back to these fighters who, when I was going through my own mental challenges, they stepped up, they became my family, they became my brothers and my sisters, they helped me through. Not that my family didn't, my family did as well, but extra people. Uh, my tribe became larger and they became more solid. I've met so many solid people, good human beings that are truly caring human beings that you would never 
really think they would be from looking at them from the outside. Uh, but now being on the inside and looking in, I've developed some amazing relationships. And this, again, goes back to because of you, Jerry. And uh, not only you, you've provided that opportunity, but you've got an amazing team as well with uh, Battlefield Fight League. Your announcers with uh, uh, David Perron, Showtime, and Craig Nielsen, uh, Showtime. He's uh, given me a uh, toque. I wear, my, I wear his toque almost every promo I do because I'm proud of that guy. That fight against Harriet that night was a phenomenal. That's one of the biggest comebacks I've seen in my life. Um, that, and it was testament for myself with my own challenges that no matter how down and out you are, keep fighting and you can come out victorious. David Perron showed that that night. Um, you've got Ryan uh, Ventura, the voice of champions. He's the in-ring announcer. You got one of the guys on the uh, cage there working with the uh, commission, Nate Olson. You got Big Rich in there. You got Trevor Carroll, one of the uh, cut men, my favorite cut men in the whole world, Rod Ringgold. He's always on you guys' cards. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. I've made so many friends, not just in the fighter aspect, but also in the uh, company itself. And Jay, you're an awesome guy. Battlefield Fight Leagues, the FL74 is going to be an awesome card. And that's because Battlefield Fight League, in my opinion, is super awesome. Jay Golshani, you have any closing words you'd like to say today? Thank you so much for your time. It was a great interview and I'll see you at the event on October 12th. I will see you at the event, sir. Thank you so very much for your time today. And I agree, it was a great interview and I appreciate you. Take care, buddy, likewise. Take care, Jay. Well, there you have it, folks. My interview with the president of Battlefield Fight League, Mr. Jay Golshani. For all of you that took the time to listen in to this audio podcast, I thank you very much from the Fonz's office, from the three of me. Thank you for taking your time. And for those that are watching on YouTube that are seeing little video content that is coming up with the audio, I would like to ask you now to please pay attention to the following video. As I say, thank you to my sponsor for this video, USG Canada. Make sure you give Howie Lee a jingle dingle the next time you want to look and feel unstoppable. <laughs>